Let's talk about using analogies in problem solving. So let's kick off with another problem. Let's talk about the mutilated checkerboard problem. The problem is this. So you've got a standard checkerboard in front of you. It's comprised of 64 squares. Um, and of course, we can cover it by 32 dominoes. The question is, if we were to take the two corner pieces away, can we cover the remaining squares with 31 dominoes? Again, give yourself a few moments to try and figure out the solution to this problem. Maybe press pause on the video whilst you do so. Did you figure it out? Do you think you can cover the rest of the checkerboard with 31 dominoes? Or perhaps not? Well, before I tell you the solution, let me give you this analogous problem. In a small Russian village, there were 32 bachelors and 32 unmarried women. The village matchmaker succeeded in arranging 32 highly satisfactory engagements. However, one drunken night, two bachelors fought each other and died. So the question is, can the matchmaker now come up with 31 heterosexual marriages among the 62 remaining people? So it should be pretty obvious from this um, second problem that the answer is no, um, because two guys, two bachelors died, it's not possible to make up 31 heterosexual pairings in the remaining 62 people. So this problem is pretty easy to understand, but in fact, it's an analogy for that checkerboard problem. So remember we had 64 squares and then the two corner pieces are taken away. The two bachelors are taken away. Notice that they are of the same colour, they are like a blue colour. So the answer is no, it is not possible to cover the 62 remaining squares with 31 dominoes. Each domino must cover both a grey and a blue square. So if we take away the two blue squares, then it's not possible for the 31 dominoes to cover the rest of the squares. Does that make sense? Did you get the correct solution? These three examples are basically how we can use an analogy to solve an otherwise complex problem. The Russian marriage problem was an analogy for the more straightforward checkerboard problem. So using a solution to a similar problem might give you the solution to the new problem. In the examples I gave you, the Russian marriage problem was the source problem and the mutilated checkerboard problem was the target problem. So we used our problem solving from the Russian marriage to help us solve the checkerboard problem. And this is the essence of analogical problem solving or using analogies or metaphors to help us to solve problems. Let's give another example. Dunker's radiation problem. Suppose you are a doctor faced with a patient who has a malignant tumour in their stomach. It is impossible to operate, but unless the tumour is removed, the patient will die. There is a type of ray that can be used. If the ray reaches the tumour at a sufficiently high intensity, the tumour will be destroyed. However, at this intensity, the healthy tissue the ray passes on the way to the tumour will also be destroyed. But at lower intensities, the ray is harmless to the healthy tissue, but does not affect the tumour. So the question is, how do you destroy the tumour without affecting the surrounding healthy tissue? Think for a few moments, pause the video as you try to come up with a solution. Did you figure it out? Well, if you didn't, you're not alone. In fact, 
only 10% of people that are given this problem come up with the solution on their own. So let me give you a similar problem to solve, the fortress problem. So with this problem, a dictator rules a small country from a strong fortress situated in the middle of a country that's surrounded by farms and villages. Many roads lead to the fortress throughout the countryside. A rebel general vowed to capture the fortress. He gathered his entire army at the head of the main road, ready to launch a full-scale frontal attack on the fortress. However, he learned that the dictator had planted mines along the main road that once detonate would also destroy the surrounding farms and villages. So the question is, how can the rebel general attack the fortress without destroying the neighbouring villages? Have you come up with a solution? Most people that um, get this problem can see that it is an analogy for the original radiation problem. So once they're given this second easier problem to solve, uh, it increases up to 30% of people will get the solution. So what is the solution? The basic idea for the two problems is exactly the same. With the fortress, the general can't take his army up the one made road, so he takes smaller armies and attacks from several small roads at the same time. And this is a solution to the original radiation problem. Rather than bombarding the tumour with one direct laser or ray, which will then affect the healthy tissue surrounding it, the key is to subject the tumour to several small arrays that don't damage the healthy tissue, but once combined together are enough to deal with the tumour. So the fortress problem is a direct analogy for the radiation problem. It's an example how analogies can be used to aid problem solving. However, it's really important to note that not everyone notices the connection between the two stories. Um, often people have to be given hints in order to notice the connection. So when people are given hints, uh, the rate of successful solution um, create, creation rises to 75%. So analogies can be great for helping with problem solving, but three things have to happen first. First of all, people have to notice the relationship between um, a solution and its analogy. If they don't notice it, then the analogy isn't very effective. Once they notice the relationship between the two solutions, they can then map between the two problems, uh, between the source and the target. They identify similar features in one problem that relate to similar features in another problem. And then you can apply the solution of one problem to the solution of the other. And that is the key to using analogies in problem solving.